for our call to worship this morning. Listen to God's inerrant word as we find it recorded in Psalm 115, verses 14 through 18. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. The heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down in silence. But as for us, we will bless the Lord from this day forth, now and forever. Praise the Lord. Shall we continue to worship by turning in our hymnals to hymn number 489, standing as we sing to the glory of God. Shall we stand and sing together? we come before you this morning we come with hearts filled with praise and thanksgiving for your blessings your goodness your mercy in fact your heavenly father that we know jesus christ our lord and our savior as our personal lord and savior and we thank you for the blessing that we have in him and through him bless us now with the presence certainly the power of your holy spirit may your name be lifted up may it be praised and may it be glorified, for we ask and pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, and please be seated. And good morning. We welcome each and every one of you into God's house. We know that he's going to bless you in this hour that we worship him together. Now, I greet you in the name of a risen and a soon coming again Savior. I want you to turn to someone sitting alongside of you, in back of you, in front of you. Extend a right hand, right hand of fellowship and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Just a few announcements that I want to share with you this morning. First of all, tonight at 6.30 p.m., our book club ministry will be meeting, but they will not be meeting here. They are going to the home 
of Paula DeMarc at 6.30. So all of you who are involved in a book club ministry tonight, you're meeting at the home of Paula DeMarc at 6.30. Attention to all our graduates, graduating from elementary school, high school, college, trade school. If you would, would you please put your name and the name of your school on a piece of paper and let Pastor Dave know. We want to honor you next Sunday uh, for your accomplishments at our morning worship experience. And please let Pastor Dave know if you would. Now, not too long ago, about three weeks ago, some baby bottles were given out. And everybody's looking at one another, what's he talking about? Well, there's little baby bottles about this big that turn into coin collectors. And you're going to bring them back, and they're for the choices of the heart. You've been about three or four weeks now, you've had them, and the bottles are due next Sunday. So please bring them in. They are for the choices of the heart, the coin collection that we've had going on for a couple of weeks now. I do have a couple of notes that I want to share with you this morning. First of all, to Pastor Dave and all my church friends, thank you for you so very much for all your prayers and cards and the passing of my brother John. It really does help. Again, thank you and God bless Floss. Thank you, Floss. And then a note of thanks from our youth director, Terry Secrets. Friday night, we held our annual youth group lock-in and it was a huge success. We had new teens as well as kids from our regular group and new friendships were made. Thanks to the parents and those who helped make this such a great event for our kids. I understand they had a great and tremendous time and uh, we thank you for helping any help that you've done and uh, we only wanna see our young people grow from there. But they did have a great time at their lock-in. We never had that when I was a youngster. I don't know what that's like. I don't know how you get away with it, first of all. You get, get all those kids locked in one place. you think a riot would break out or something. But no, they had a great time. Our flowers this morning, they are presented to the glory of God, and they're given in loving honor of Ann and Newt Heggie on their 63rd wedding anniversary from their family. <laughs> Ann and Newt. These are all the announcements I have. I'm going to ask the ushers if they will to go forward now as we continue to worship our living Lord by giving unto him our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
Shall we rise and sing our doxology together? Again, as we come before you to the throne of grace, we come to praise and to thank you for your blessings, your goodness, your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we thank you. You've given us the opportunity to be witnesses for you no matter where we go. An opportunity to serve you by giving out of the love that is within our hearts. Bless the gift, bless the giver. And Heavenly Father, may your will be accomplished. May your name be praised and glorified through it all. For we ask and pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Well, thank you very much, Carolyn, for introducing our time to for prayer in uh, such a unique and gentle way. That is called a melodica, right? Close enough. That's what I say it is. That's what it's going to be. But uh, that's a unique instrument. And uh, thank you for sharing God's message with us in that wonderful way. And thank you, Lori, also as well. Now, as we go to prayer together, we, we need to thank the Lord for his blessing upon our ministry here in a variety of ways. And one of the ways is he has provided for us a way of uh, enabling us to restore, have our uh, stained glass windows uh, professionally restored. And uh, the new ones are back, they're in the foyer. And so if it looks brighter as you leave, it's because it is brighter. And we have five more to go, but the Historic Society has been wonderful in their $50,000 grant. And uh, we all thank the Lord for that. And if you desire to, uh, it's not too late to order one of these windows. Maybe one or two families, three families want to get together. Uh, we'll make sure that they're dedicated in loving memory or in honor of someone of your choosing. We certainly need to keep praying for our nation because every Sunday I say it, and every Sunday our nation gives us reason to pray for it. Uh, on the national level, our, the people around our country, around the world, fellow believers, unbelievers, uh, our leaders, God wants us to pray for them to uh, trust him to lead them as they lead us. And we need to pray all about that as well. Now, if you are not aware of the fact that the Pizzetti family is really in need of our prayers and our helping hands. Dom and Jean Pizzetti uh, lost their home to fire early this past Thursday morning. And uh, they are going to be out of their home for two to three months. And they right now are living in the Marriott uh, Hotel in Cherry Hill uh, and seeking a a dwelling place until their home is repaired. So they lost everything on the contents. Uh, two weeks from today on our fellowship offering during communion, we will receive a, an offering designated just to help them. And uh, this is very, uh, Carolyn and I have been through when we lost our uh, home 20 years ago. And we know how uh, just disturbing it is uh, they lost all their clothes, all their medications. And uh, try to get your medications replaced. It's hard enough to get them filled, let alone replaced, with the insurance companies and so forth. So it's very complicated. But they are all safe. We praise the Lord for that. Uh, so Charles Coffin also lost his home years ago to a fire. So... Uh, unless you've been on that end of it, you really don't have an understanding of what's involved. So we need to pray for them uh, in the weeks to come. And then uh, others on our prayer list. Marie Alberger is in uh, the virtual rehab in Berlin. And she'll be there for a few weeks, few days to come. And then Amy Dowg is also in virtual rehab in Berlin. And uh, she also needs our prayer support as she, uh, they endeavor to help her to gain strength. Uh, Marilyn Armstrong needs our prayer support with her difficult uh, heart, heart complications. And uh, Connie Lamphier as well, and Chuck Marshall, Walter Crane, Joanne Lickfield's brother. Uh, on, uh, everybody else that's on our prayer list all need our prayer support and our loving care. Our missionary for the week, John and Dasha Abramovich, full-time missionaries to the land and country of Poland, especially amongst children through the Bible Club movement. Let's pray for them and the Lord's guidance and protection while they are serving him in foreign land. Let's go to prayer together, and you personally have a few moments for yourself to pray in your own silent way, and then I'll ask you to join me in prayer. May we pray together.
holy, holy, holy are you, almighty God, and our heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we honor ourselves to be able to call you our heavenly Father. For you have promised us that when we who invite Jesus Christ to be our personal Savior, we become your eternal children forevermore, and you are our everlasting Father. So we acknowledge how great you are in every way, how grateful we are, Heavenly Father, to be able to pray at your throne of grace in the loving name of Jesus Christ before our loving Heavenly Father. In the power of the loving heaven, the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we believe your word. We trust your word to be true. And we know that you invite us to come just as we are. Do not hide any sin from you, but rather come confessing our sins, repenting of our sins, trusting you to cleanse us from that which is unrighteous in your sight grieving your heart. We seek, Heavenly Father, restoration and renewal as we confess and repent. Gracious Father, we're mindful of your blessings that are without number, your mercy that is boundless, your forgiveness of all sin that is endless, your ever-present comfort amongst us. You are indeed all-powerful. And we thank you that you sustain us in the good times and then supply us in the difficult times. We thank you for delivering the Pizzetti family from by your mercy. And we pray, Heavenly Father, <clears throat> that you'll guide them through this time of chaos. May we be your hands of help and prayer in their midst but we pray also for those who are in sorrow or in surgery times of loneliness and discouragement and heartache discontent oh father you know the need and how great it is and you are the great supplier of every need how grateful we are heavenly father to lift up our voices with thanksgiving for america and yet, Heavenly Father, we see a land that's filled with those who proclaim themselves as leaders, filled with people who continue to turn their back against your word and your will. And while this grieves your heart, yet you're still willing to bless us. And we're most grateful for these blessings. But Father, we pray for a spiritual revival to sweep the hearts of people, including our leaders, while our Savior tarries in his return. And how glad we are to proclaim the blessed hope that our Savior is alive and he is coming again. And he will restore Israel as your chosen people, as the Messiah of Israel. We thank you that he is our living Savior. He is the everlasting King of all kings. We know that all things are possible, Heavenly Father, by faith, as we trust you, and as we pray together in the precious, loving, wonderful, uplifting, holy, saving name of Jesus Christ. And all believers joined and said together, Amen. 136, please, 136, 136, if your heart keeps right. Let's stand and sing it together, please. Let's stand and sing together.
All right, thank you. Please be seated. Let's get right into God's Word together. As by God's grace, He had it recorded for us in God's wisdom in the first letter of John. If you're not sure where that is, as always, we encourage you to use the table of contents. Some man, some woman makes a living printing that in the Bibles. And or find Revelation and turn left slowly. And if you get to Second Peter, you've gone too far. So First Peter chapter one, First John chapter one. And we believe by faith that God perfectly inspired John to write the book of Revelation. And I remind you that Revelation is without an S. At the end, the book of Revelation is one revelation of God, not a series of revelations. And John was the only one, the only apostle who did not, the only disciple who did not turn his back on Jesus Christ. And what did John get for that? He got marooned on an island called Patmos, by himself, no other human being on this island, only wild animals. What did I do, Lord? Do you ever feel like that? John certainly could have felt like that. And yet, that is where he gave God's revelation. And if you read Revelation, you won't wonder why what's happening today is happening. Because it tells us it's going to happen. We just didn't think we'd see it with our own eyes. Well, this same John then wrote the Gospel of John, which when someone becomes born again with the Holy Spirit, that's the first part, portion of the Scripture that we encourage them to read because in the Gospel of John, God uses John to simply tell us who Jesus Christ is and why he came. And here now, in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, he is addressing believers, believers like you, believers like me, and no other believers. Except these were brand new believers without the blessing and the benefit of churches all over the place and Bible scholars and preachers and missionaries to teach them the Word of God. This is all new to them. So under that context, understand that in these three verses that I'll read for us, plus all the other scriptures I'm going to draw our attention to, this is not the opinion of John, who might have been in a good mood. Maybe he had a good piece of lemon meringue pie that he ate before he wrote this, and that put him in a good mood. No, this is what God has spoken through John. Never separate yourself from that. Because otherwise, the Bible just becomes another book. But this is God's Word. This is God speaking to us through John. And with that in mind, now we'll, we'll read the scriptures of 1 John chapter 1, beginning in verse 5 through verse 7, and then we'll ask the Lord to bless us with understanding. God through John says, This is the message we have heard from him, meaning God himself, and announced to you that God is light, and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with God and yet walk in the darkness, God says, we lie, and we do not practice the truth. And if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. May we pray together. Heavenly Father, 
we welcome the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, upon the presentation and the reception of your word, so that our minds will learn what you want us to learn, and our hearts will be changed in the way you want us to be changed. We pray, Heavenly Father, to the one sitting around us, that if he or she does not know Jesus Christ as personal Savior, that today he or she will respond to Jesus Christ by faith. We pray for our fellow believers in this place of worship, watching by television or through the Internet, that they will be blessed of the Holy Spirit as we open your word in your presence. Thank you for your life-changing blessing. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, all believers join and said together, Amen. I'm not going to ask you to uplift your hand, but if I were to ask you to lift up your hand, would you do so in answer to this question? Are you afraid of the dark? Now the reason I didn't ask you to raise your hand is because I am not saying that you would lie, but if you are afraid of dark, I'm not sure if you would admit to that. Because people don't want to admit that they're afraid of the dark. Some aren't, but many are. Children are afraid of the dark. We want a nightlight on of some sort. Adults also are afraid of the dark, and therefore they want several nightlights on. I have no shame. I don't like darkness. I like light somewhere. It's interesting, a few years ago, I remember when Larry King was still had his show. He was interviewing Stephen King, the, the famous writer of novels that are scary novels to read. And I remember Stephen, Larry King asking Stephen King, well, when do you write your novels? What's your schedule like? He said, well, I get up early in the morning, and after I eat something, I start writing, and I usually end the writing by the end of the afternoon. And Larry King asked, do you ever write your books at nighttime? He said, no. The scary stuff that I write, I could never write it in the dark. <laughs> well, maybe Stephen King's afraid of the dark. Darkness in the Bible is in reference to anything that has to do with Satan, evil, sin. Anything that goes against God is darkness. God says, I want you to walk in my light because everything about me is light. God, first of all, wants us to seek God's light. Every one of us, regardless of nationality, regardless of where people live in the world, God wants everyone to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, everyone to repent of their sins, everyone to become born again to the Holy Spirit. He wants everyone to seek his light in the darkness of this world. But only we can actually do that. In verse 5, God says, Here's why I am light, because there is no darkness in me. I read about uh, a farmer who was very frugal years ago. And he had some farm hands. And he cut corners in every way that he possibly could. And one night he was in his farmhouse and he looked out the kitchen window and he saw one of the farmhands leaving the bunkhouse carrying a lantern in the darkness. So he rushed out and he said, Yo, where are you going? He said, Well, I'm, I'm going to go see my girlfriend and it's dark out here. 
So I'm using the lantern to see by. He says, whoa, whoa, whoa. A, that's my lantern, and B, that's my oil you're using. You put that back in the bunkhouse, you walk in the darkness. Why, when I was your age and I was courting the woman who became my wife, every night I'd go and see her in total darkness. I never saw her in the light. He said, I know you never saw her in the light. I didn't think it was that funny myself, but I told it anyway. Last week I told a joke that I thought was hysterical. I was the only one laughing. Now I tell a dumb joke and everybody laughs. But at any rate, but God is light. And we need to remember that all the time because we're living in this world. But this is not our world. Our world is a we who know Jesus Christ as our Savior, that we're only here, we're only renting space. Our real home is in glory forevermore. Amen? Amen? And thank God for that, because this world is dark. And I'm an optimist, but I'm an optimist because I know Jesus Christ is coming again. But there are so many people who are seeking light at their work or in their bank account or in their fun or in their journeys and, and it's all contained right here and then they discover darkness you can't even go into a bank without thinking first you know this could get robbed this bank could get robbed while I'm in it. You know, I'm involved with the police department. I have all kinds of police IDs, shirts and jackets. I used to wear those. <laughs> I don't wear those out in public anymore. I am a target. They don't know I'm not real. <laughs> they think I'm the enemy and going to get one. I want one of those teardrops, you know. That's what those are on your face if you kill a cop. That's darkness. God says, I want you to seek my light because in me there is no darkness. And then verse 6 talks about stumbling. We can stumble in the darkness. Um, the Pazettis were telling me when the house was on fire, they were all home when that fire broke out. And it was filled with smoke, and they couldn't see darkness. Carolyn and I remembered 20 years ago as if it happened today when our house was totally lost in fire. Darkness. If you walk around in your house at nighttime with no nightlights on, and someone moved something that normally wasn't moved, and you stumble, and you stub your toes, and I know that nobody... Curses in this church family. But if there was a time to curse, it would be when you stub your toe, yes? Or bang your thumb. Or if a cabinet door is left, that cabinet door will find itself in the next house over if it happens to me. <laughs> as if the cabinet door had anything to do with it. But that's what happens when you stumble in the darkness. Well, God gives us some scriptures here that helps us to avoid stumbling in the darkness. One is found over in Hebrews chapter 10, and it's a familiar passage of scripture that unbelievers totally ignore but I am shocked to say so many believers, people who are claiming to be believers, have apparently also begun to ignore or continue to ignore. But let's look at it. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning of verse 23. Let us hold fast. We're talking about stumbling in the darkness, how to avoid stumbling in the darkness. Let us hold fast 
the confession of our hope without wavering, without doubting, without questioning, without hesitation. The confession of our hope in Jesus Christ. Let's, let's hold on to that because there's nothing to hold on to in this world that's not already shaking. But he goes on to say, you don't want to stumble in the darkness? Then trust the Lord who, is, who promised, who is faithful. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. That's what I try to do during every message. I don't maybe always succeed, but that's my desire. To stimulate each other with love and good deeds. And then verse 25, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some. In other words, your neighbor may not come to church, but you will still come to church. You might have family members that won't come to church, but you will still come to church. That might be the habit of your boss or somebody that you work with. They don't go to church, but you're not going to let that stop you from coming to church. That's the habit of others. But I am going to assemble together with others. Every one of us right now, this morning, could be somewhere else by choice. Maybe some of you might want to be somewhere else right now. But you've chosen to come here. Why? Because you're not the habit of others. Others obviously have chosen not to come. That's their habit. But that's not going to be our habit. We're here to encourage one another. All the more as you see the day drawing near. I do not know when Jesus Christ is coming again. But I know he is coming again. And we ought to behave and act and think as if he's coming today, now. Because he says, I will come when you least think I'm coming. And I always throw out this test to myself, but also to yourself. Just ask yourself, again, don't raise your hands. Did you give any thought that when you woke up this morning that today could be the day? When you got dressed to come to church, did you give any thought within yourself that maybe today, before 12 o'clock comes, the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first and we who are alive will be caught up in the air. Did you ever think that could happen today? You are then living proof of what Jesus Christ said. I will come when you do not expect it. See, we're living proof of that. So we're not to walk and stumble in the darkness. We are to gather for worship. One reason people have stopped coming to church is they're bored. Humor me. There was a day when people used to make excuses for not coming to church to the pastor. And I would know that it's an excuse, and they would know that I know it's an excuse, but we played this little silly game. Not anymore. People outright just tell me, yeah, I'm not going to church anymore. Why? It's boring. Well, let's just think about this hour that we're in. How boring is it? Are the three hymns that we sing boring? Well, yeah, they're really boring. Okay, well, let me just tell you, the average hymn is three minutes and some odd seconds. Am I right? It's going about nine minutes. You can't make it through nine minutes? You're that bored for nine minutes? You don't want to come to church anymore? Well, what else is boring? Is the prelude boring? Is the offertory boring? Is the special music boring? Well, no, no, we like all that. That boy, Lori jazzes it up, and Carolyn plays that, whatever that is, and, uh, or singing, we got great singing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so you enjoy that part. So that's not boring. Well, yeah, no, that's all right. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? Uh, the offering, is that boring? Well, you know, I, I could use the money myself, but, you know. How about the sermon? 30 minutes. 
Well, it's not all that boring. Some jokes once in a while. What am I saying here? Folks, come on now. You and I do things every week that are boring. But we do them. Got to go to the doctor's office. How boring is that? Your appointment is 10 o'clock. It's now 12 o'clock. No sign of getting in. Two hours of what? Boredom. You see, but you do it anyway. You don't want to stumble in the darkness of the world? Then worship God. Study God's word. Come to Sunday school. Study God's word on your own because that's the only word of God that never changes. Books change all the time. Another way of not stumbling is not to neglect examining yourself. The Bible talks about examining yourself before God. Or not neglecting to take responsibility for yourself. Boy, oh boy, am I tired of the blame game. Parents blame the children. Children blame the parents. Children blame their brothers and sisters. It's the neighbor's fault. It's the pastor's fault. It's the elder's fault. It's the deacon's fault. It's the uh, painter's fault. It's the uh, gumshoe dropper, cleaner upper's fault. It's somebody's fault. Not my fault. Am I talking to myself? Not if you're honest. If you are honest, you know that that blame game is played. We blame God. Why don't we ever blame Satan? He's the one that causes disruption. But if we would examine ourselves and accept responsibility, then we're walking in God's light and we're not stumbling. And then, thirdly, God wants us to walk in the light every day in verse 7 of 1 John chapter 1. Every day and throughout every day, walk in the light. First thing out of your mouth, silently or verbally, ought to be, Lord, this is the day you have created. I'm in pain, I'm annoyed, I'm disturbed. I got a busy day ahead of me, but Lord, this is the day you have created. I want to walk in the light. And you ought to be doing that all day long because the darkness comes when you least expect it. Walk in the light that strengthens our fellowship with God. Walking in the light enlarges our awareness of God's presence. Psalm 37, verses 27 and 28. Depart from evil and do good, so you will abide forever. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his godly ones. They are preserved forever. But the, the descendants of the wicked one will be cut off. If you have Jesus Christ your service as your personal Savior, no matter what's going on in your world and in your life, you're going to be preserved forever. Walk in that light. Walk in the presence of knowing that, uh, that God is always with you. No matter what. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand and I will not be shaken. I will tell you the testimony of Don Pizzetti is exactly that. He told me, and nobody in that kind of situation lies, not even to impress the pastor. He said, I'm not going to let this shake me. I've lost everything, but it will not shake me. That's faith. And that's the kind of faith that God wants us to have, but you only have that kind of faith when you walk in God's light. Someone sent me this through the email. 
It's quite lengthy, but I would ask you to listen very carefully to it because it asks a series of very soul-penetrating questions. What if God would not take the time to bless us today because we would not take the time to thank him yesterday? What if God decided to stop leading us tomorrow because we didn't follow him today? What if we never saw another flower bloom because we grumbled when God sent the rain? What if God didn't walk with us today because we failed to recognize it as his day? What if God took away the Bible tomorrow because we would not read it today? What if God took away his message because we failed to listen to the messenger? What if God didn't send his only begotten son because he wanted us to pay the price for our sins? What if God stopped loving and caring for us because we failed to love and care for others? What if God would not heed us, hear us today because we would not listen to him? What if God answered our prayers the way we answer his call to service? What if God met our needs the way we give him our lives? We'd all be lost. We'd all be lost. It is only by God's grace that those of us who know Jesus Christ our Savior can say, we're born again with the Holy Spirit, we're bound for heaven. God calls us to walk in his light, to seek his light, to not stumble in the darkness. That's only by God's grace. There is only one reason you and I are still breathing right now, this second. Only one reason. God's grace. God's grace. Where would you be if he withdrew his grace? You and I would be totally lost. Totally lost. So God says, you have a choice. You can walk in the darkness of sin and evil and disobedience to my word, or you can walk in light of salvation and forgiveness and obedience. It's your choice. But God also reminds us, as with any choice, come consequences. So God says, if you are without Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you're walking, you're living, you're acting, you're thinking, you're going through this life in darkness. And you can disagree, and you can say, no, I'm not. You can do that all you want. That does not change what God says. Come out of that darkness and come into the light of salvation of Jesus Christ forevermore. If you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're in the light. But are you living in that light? Or are you still stumbling through life as well? Come out of that darkness as you have. Stay out of that darkness and walk in God's light. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, you are so wonderful to bless us with your grace. And we acknowledge, Heavenly Father, we are only here because it's your desire for us to be here 
but you desire us to live according to your word in the light of your word, in the light of your presence, in the light of Jesus Christ, in the light of the power of the Holy Spirit. So quicken our hearts as believers to respond accordingly to your honor and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ and all believers joined and said together, Amen. Let's stand and sing unto the Lord this most appropriate song as we live out each day, 312, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Let's stand and sing together, 312, sing it unto the Lord. humbly ask you to bless us now as we leave this place of worship as you have blessed us this past hour. And humbly do we ask you to dismiss us as with your blessings as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uplift our sagging spirits with the truth that because Jesus Christ is alive, the best is yet to come. Amen and amen. Amen.